Welcome to the Stem Cells module. In this talk, we're going to have a brief introduction to the world of stem cells. We'll start with the stem cell concept. A stem cell is a type of cell that has the ability to divide and produce a copy of itself, which is called self-renewal, as well as produce a daughter cell that has the potential to generate into progenitor cells which are capable of maturing into different cell types. That is called as potency. So when we look at the figure, we can see a cell and the circular arrow basically says that this stem cell, when it undergoes cell division, can make copies of itself and thereby it can self-renew itself. On the other hand, the stem cell can also undergo cell division and produce progeny, which are progenitors, that have the capability of maturing into different cell types, like a liver cell or a stomach cell. The cell division of stem cells can be symmetric or asymmetric. When a stem cell undergoes symmetric division, it can result in two outcomes. The first outcome is two daughter cells that result in the expansion of the stem cell pool. So what this means is when one stem cell divides to form two daughter cells, both daughter cells are stem cells and thus now we're having more numbers of stem cells. Another outcome that can happen is the two daughter cells that are produced, they actually are committed to differentiate and thereby now you're having a reduction in the stem cell pool. Thus, in symmetric cell division, the daughter cells are going to be the same. They will either be stem cells or they will be progenitor cells that will ultimately differentiate. Stem cells can also show asymmetric cell division. In asymmetric cell division, we're going to, there are two major types. The first type is single cell asymmetry. In this case, one stem cell will divide to form another stem cell, which is a daughter cell, but the second daughter cell will continue to differentiate to form a developmentally committed cell. So as shown in the picture, in the case of single cell asymmetry, when the cell undergoes cell division, one of the daughter cells will be a stem cell, whereas the other daughter cell will become a committed cell. Another type of asymmetric cell division is population asymmetry. In this case, when you look at the pool of stem cells, some cells will divide to form stem cell progeny, so both daughter cells will be stem cells, as shown in the figure below, while other stem cells, when they undergo cell division, they will actually form differentiated progeny. And this is what is seen on the other part. So in this case, when we look at the single cell, each cell shows symmetric cell division, but the population as a whole shows asymmetric cell division because some of the stem cells will give rise to only progeny stem cells, whereas other types of stem cells within that population will give rise to daughter cells that are committed cells or progenitor cells. We're now going to look at the different types of stem cells based on their potency. Now the stem cell potential is the range of cell types a stem cell can produce. And the first type of stem cell that we're going to look at is a totipotent cell. A totipotent stem cell is a stem cell that can generate all cell types of both the embryonic and extra embryonic lineages. When we look at the blue box, the cell that is shown to be totipotent is a zygote. So a zygote is a totipotent cell because it has the ability to give rise to embryonic as well as extra embryonic cells. When the zygote undergoes cell division in the cleavage step of development, the cells up till the 4 to 8 cell stage are also totipotent. The next type of stem cell is a pluripotent stem cell. This is a stem cell that is capable of producing all cells of the embryo. However, it cannot produce the extra embryonic lineages. Another type of stem cell is a multipotent stem cell. 
Multipotent stem cells can produce cell types with restricted specificity depending on the tissue or the organ they are present in. Thus, they are not as versatile as the pluripotent stem cell. So an example is a stem cell that is present, let's say, in the brain, can give rise to cells that are present in the brains, like neurons. However, that stem cell will not be able to give rise to, for example, a stomach cell or a, or a liver cell. Now, stem cells are regulated between self-renewal and differentiated states. So when a stem cell undergoes cell division, does it remain as a stem cell or does it differentiate into a different type of committed cell? It depends on the microenvironment that it's in, which is called as the stem cell niche. Most organs and tissues possess stem cell niches. The stem cell niches employ a variety of mechanisms of cell-to-cell -cell communication to regulate the quiescent, proliferative, and differentiative states of the resident stem cells that are present. The principles of regulation involve both extracellular mechanisms, which include physical and chemical methods, as well as intracellular mechanisms that include cytoplasmic determinants, transcriptional, and epigenetic regulation. We're going to look at all these different types of regulations that are observed. The figure here shows us different ways in which the stem cell activity can be regulated. One way is through cell adhesion or juxtagrin signaling. This is normally happening through cells that are interacting with the stem cells. Different cell adhesion proteins that can play a role in regulating the stem cell activity are proteins like cadherins. Juxtagrin signaling are also mediated by membrane proteins and one of the examples we're going to see a lot is notch signaling, which is an example of juxtagrin signaling. Another way to regulate the stem cell activity is through interactions with the extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix interaction helps a stem cell to decide whether it will remain as a stem cell or whether it will differentiate into a special type of cell. Paracrine signaling also plays a very important role in regulating stem cell activity. The paracrine factors that are synthesized by other cells that are present in the stem cell niche are able to help a stem cell decide whether it remains as a stem cell or undergoes differentiation. Another way of regulating stem cell activity is through the asymmetric localization of cytoplasmic determinants. Many stem cell niches are innervative through different types of neurons. These neurons can actually release neurotransmitters that can influence the stem cell activity. Finally, we're going to look at a different type of signaling, which is endocrine signaling. So we already know what is juxtacrine and paracrine signaling, but in the case of endocrine signaling, the endocrine factor is made by a cell that is far away and is normally the endocrine factor like a hormone is released in the blood and then approaches the stem cell niche where the stem cell can respond to the presence of that endocrine factor through the process of endocrine signaling. Another way to regulate stem cell activity is by transcriptional regulation. So transcription factors can play a role in transcribing specific genes that help a stem cell decide whether to remain a stem cell or to de develop into a different type of differentiated cell. Another way to be able to regulate the stem cell activity is by epigenetic regulation. In the case of epigenetic regulation, the chromatin can be assembled in such a way either to provide access to gene expression or not to provide access to the genes. And this is normally done through chromatin modifications, like histone modifications, or through DNA methylation. Thus, as we can see, there are many, many ways of regulating the stem cell activity. 
And all of these processes play a role in determining whether the daughter cell that is produced through stem cell division remains as a stem cell or will proceed to the process of differentiation. With this, we come to the end of our talk where we learned about stem cells and the different ways by which they can undergo cell division. We also learned about the potency of stem cells and what a stem cell niche is. We finally learned about different mechanisms that can regulate stem cells.